Hello, this is Philip Myers of Pemi Consulting. Welcome to part eight on Morse Circle. In this module, we're going to do a numerical example. We can get answers with the graphic tool, the Morse Circle, and we get a general understanding of the problem and how the direction and stress signs really work. It can be quite confusing. This can all be done without a lot of math or memorization of the formulas that we previously went over to build the foundation for understanding the Morse circle. A problem involving Morse circle usually begins with a knowledge of the three independent stresses. The two normal stresses, sigma x and sigma y, and the shearing stress tau xy. We don't know where the principal stress directions are oriented but arbitrarily we've shown them in red here. Sigma P1 for the maximum principal stress and Sigma P2 for the minimum principal stress. The coordinate system X and Y is shown oriented along the stress element directions. The first thing to do is to draw a conceptual sketch of the Morse circle. To do that we orient the positive direction for the tau axis downward and what that does is align the direction of rotation as being positive counterclockwise for both the stress element or the material and the Morse circle. It's not absolutely essential, but it's a useful consistency to apply to Morse circle problems. Recall that any stress state is given by the diameter on Morse circle, so the two endpoints on any diameter represent the stress state depending on the rotated orient orientation of the stress element. Here I've color-coded normal stresses as green, the principal stresses as red, and the shearing stresses as beige. Also recall that any angle on the Morse circle is twice the angle of rotation in the stress element. So the red line, for example, has sigma P1 and P2, but in the stress element or in the material, those are only apart by an angle of 90 degrees. The next thing we can do is to start plotting the points. The middle point or midpoint of the Morse circle is sigma average. That's simply the average of the two normal stresses that were given, sigma x plus sigma y over 2. So the center can be plotted at sigma average comma 0 on the sigma axis. Point A is here and can simply be plotted by sigma x at this point and down by tau xy. Down because tau in the stress element diagram is shown as positive. Point B can be plotted by taking sigma y which would be the projected value of this green point down onto the sigma axis and the value of the shear stress in the negative direction up to this green point. The radius is easily found from this triangle. So sigma x minus sigma average, this distance here squared, plus tau xy, this distance squared, is according to the Pythagorean theorem giving the radius r squared. The angle of rotation to get from the stress element to the principal stresses, in other words, this angle here. On the Morse circle, that angle is 2 theta, and the formula for the tangent of an angle allows us to use the arctangent, find 2 theta, which can be divided by 2 to find theta. Recall that when we have a stress element, we don't really know where the principal planes are. In this case, the principal planes have arbitrarily been shown at angle theta away from the stress element directions. But the Morse circle does give us that information. Basically the green diameter, if it's rotated in a positive direction through angle 2 theta, then we have the principal planes. In the stress element or in the material, the rotation is only half the amount as on the Morse circle. Recall that and on the principal planes, we have the maximum and minimum principal stresses, but no shear stress, as shown here by this point and here by this point. To change the diameter of the Morse circle from the principal plane or principal direction to the shear stress maximum direction, we have to rotate back from the red diameter by 90 degrees on the Morse circle. 
that's equivalent to rotating the stress element 45 degrees in the stress element or the material. Under these conditions we have the maximum shear stress tau max. The directions are shown as positive as they were given in the initial problem as positive and the normal stresses are the same. They are equal to sigma average here because they're on this diameter. Here is a Morse circle example with numbers. The first thing to do is to plot the three points. So we do that by getting the x and y coordinate of the center and the two points A and B which correspond to the faces A and B on the stress element. So sigma average comma zero is the coordinate for the center. Sigma average is the stress in the norm in the x direction plus the stress in the y direction. The y direction is compressive so its stress is negative. Averaging that is 47 plus a negative 25 divided by 2. That's 11 and 0. So this point can be plotted. Next we have point A. Sigma x is 47 and the shear stress is 8. So we go out here 47 and 8 down in the positive direction. Next we have point B which is negative 25 and negative 8 because we're in the upper half of the Morse circle. After that we need to get the radius of the circle so recall that that was sigma x minus sigma average squared plus tau xy squared equal to the radius squared. The sigma average is 47 plus the negative 25 divided by 2 which were these two components averaged and that was 11 so if we do the arithmetic take the 47 minus 11 squared plus the shearing stress squared we end up with 1360 taking the square root of that we get a radius of 36.88 we'll call it 36.9 that allows us to get the principal stresses so sigma averages plus r is equal to 11 plus 36.9 that's 47.9 the minimum principal stress sigma p2 is sigma average minus r that's 11 minus the 36.9 and that's negative 25.9 now we've rotated from the stress element up to the principal axis but to get this angle theta 2 theta on the Morse circle we have to take tau xy divided by sigma x minus sigma average and that's 8 divided by 11, 47 minus 11 or 0 0.22 if we take the arc tangent of 0 0.22 we get 12.52 degrees that is 2 theta so in the material or the stress element theta is 6.26 degrees shown here and that would be in the positive clockwise direction to get from the principal plane back to the shearing stress maximum shearing stress plane we rotate 45 degrees in the material or stress element or 90 degrees on the Morse circle diagram when we do that we have zero principal stresses and for the shear stress we have a maximum which is the same in the two directions of 11. The shear stress is simply the radius which we found here to be 36.9 so that's shown here the shear stresses are 36.9 they're in the positive direction and you'll notice that this corner we were given positive shear stresses here and when we rotate 45 degrees here they're oriented in the same direction the other way to see that is that we haven't crossed the sigma axis so the shearing stress has stayed, stayed positive during these angle rotations well thank you and we'll see you next time